When he went out to California prior to my going there last year, he had his personal safety impaired there by a group of anarchists who laid out in front of his automobile and threatened even the existence of our president. Well, I told the people in California, and I tell you in South Carolina, you elect me president, and I come to South Carolina, I go to Alabama as the president of your nation, and I go to California, and a group of anarchists lay down in front of my automobile, it's going to be the last one they'll ever want to lie down in front of me. Well, the first thing, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to not only stand with the police, and say that you have the moral support of the presidency and we all ought to be thankful for the police and firemen and I know you are. I'm also going to say to my attorney general, I want an indictment sought against every professor in this country making a speech calling for communist victory and I want to see them put under a good federal jail somewhere to go. That's what it is. We, not at this time, but we've been offered that by the administration, which we are grateful for, and uh, we are working out the arrangements now about the date. I believe our office is doing that. It'll probably be the latter part of July. Governor, Abe Fortas has been nominated as the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Do you think that was a good choice? Well, uh, all I can say is that uh, some of the decisions that Mr. Forrest has been involved in, uh, had I been president, I would not have nominated him. Do you think he will be a friend or an enemy to the South? Well, now, when you talk about friend or enemy to the South, I don't think there's anything involved sectional anymore in uh, uh, at all. I think it's uh, a matter of constitution, the constitution of our country, and uh, when you put it in the context of an enemy, a friend of the South, that's for the purpose of trying to sectionalize what we're talking about. People in uh, uh, Seattle, Washington are just as concerned about uh, the destruction of constitutional processes by court members writing law as those are uh, the people in Alabama. The people in our country are tired of the non-elected branch of the government uh, trying to bring about social revolution and change by uh, writing laws themselves. They are not supposed to write laws, they are supposed to interpret what the law is. And I think our movement has already impressed upon the court that they have about destroyed the effectiveness of the police in our country. And we now found a decision the other day that went opposite what they have been writing before. And I dare say that uh, letting people know uh, letting the court know how people feel in the country has brought them around. But they are not supposed to render decisions in that regard. They are supposed to render decisions based on what the law is and not what they think it ought to be. And their notion of what's good uh, for the man on the street is not necessarily concurred in by the man on the street.
Our government is off course, and only the people expressing their will at the ballot box can set it back in its true direction, as envisioned by those who wrote the Constitution, and until the last number of years by those who interpret the Constitution. Our nation's leadership foments violence. It encourages anarchy. It frees criminals. It threatens to destroy our freedom. It encourages the use of violence as a political weapon. Unless there is a drastic turn, America will be unable to recover. It will be unable to survive as a free nation. Unless we are willing to attack the real cause of violence, of riots, of anarchy, of murder, of criminality, and of criminals running loose in our streets, the situation will continue to grow worse. The answer lies in obedience to the law, in the ability of our police at all levels to enforce the law without interference from do-good judges whose decisions are wrecking our freedom. We must give our police the power necessary to enforce the law, and following that, we must ensure that courts are not allowed to destroy the security of our country by liberal left-wing decisions that have no basis in true constitutional law. And I might add that we ought to outlaw the Communist Party in the United States. I am not seeking any support in the Democratic uh, Convention, nor am I asking any delegate from Alabama to support me and nominate me there. But, but I cannot, of course, control the actions of the delegates. I might say that I'm not interested, and I do appreciate your support and wanting to be for me. My position is that we ought to have had, uh, we ought to have had the enforcement of some of the laws already on the statute books. And, of course, we ought to have cracked down very heavily in the past on the matter of machine guns and bazookas and uh, uh, guns of that sort. Uh, but uh, a law that makes it almost impossible for a good man and a law-abiding citizen to own a gun uh, is only, uh, uh, that law is only observed by the good citizens. A man who wants to violate the law, who will kill you, who will burn a building down, who will uh, take over a university, uh, he wouldn't obey a gun law. Uh, they advised me, of course, that the hearing was scheduled next week and of the action which they had taken. Uh, I offered uh, them the assistance of uh, the governor's office uh, in any way possible to assist them in uh, defending the freedom of choice plan which they have presented to the court uh, and expressed uh, my grave concern to them as I have to you uh, on many occasions about the effect of arbitrary, mandatory attendance zones on the public school system of this state. At this moment, I cannot give you a precise figure as to the number of the state cars which will be called in. As you know, the state now owns approximately 1,700 automobiles. I will be keenly disappointed if we cannot cut this number in half when the program is finalized. This is not to suggest, however, that we will have 850 automobiles in the motor pool. To the contrary, we anticipate using only about 100 vehicles, a figure which may have to be adjusted as we gain experience in this new area. Vehicles which are called in but not assigned to the motor pool or reassigned will be sold at public auction. I also feel it is most important that I assure you 
that this carpool plan will not involve any vehicles assigned to law enforcement agencies in the state. It is my firm conviction that the establishment of this carpool can result in a substantial saving to the state of Alabama. Not only will there be a reduction in the number of automobiles required for state use, but also a corresponding reduction in related expenses. No, I hadn't heard about that one. He stated that he had complained to you about state funds. I, I would like to. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to go or not, frankly. I don't feel good. Now, this breaks down to roughly $3 million in loss of income tax and $2.5 million in loss of sales tax. I would remind you that in addition to, to this, and this is based on the people of Alabama paying an additional $70 million in income taxes, and being able then to deduct that $70 million from their state income tax return, and are losing the state income tax on that. We take the $70 million out of circulation. We lose the sales tax on it, estimated at $2.5 million. And then, of course, we also lose all the other consumer taxes that would be paid on that same amount of money in circulation. No, uh, there's been no request for any additional troopers on this trip, to my knowledge, and uh, with all these Secret Service agents, I don't know where he'd put them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really doubt uh, there's just so much that so many can do, and beyond that, uh, I doubt if it would be too effective anyway, and, and uh, there's been no request made for any additional uh, uh, security for this trip, to my knowledge, and I frankly doubt if any would be needed. Governor, when was the request made for the use of state pilots in Washington? On Friday after Governor Lurleen died, on the following Friday. Are any other state employees uh, active in the campaign other than the pilots and state troopers? Well, I don't know what you mean by that. If you mean on state time, uh, that is, away from their regular state duties and this sort of thing, I'd say no, not to my knowledge. Now. Uh, at nights and on weekends, these people may be supporting the governor uh, in his campaign just like I am, but uh, they're not regularly assigned to his, or even uh, temporarily assigned to his campaign, or anything of this nature, uh, to my knowledge. year this institution graduated 99 students in a wide variety of occupational areas. This year the class has gone, grown to 104 and so far not a single graduate of this school has failed to find a good job with a good starting salary and an opportunity for advancement. Soon the Northwest Alabama State Technical Institute will take another giant step forward with the construction of the 60 student dormitory. This will enable more students to take part in your excellent course of study in aviation. The trade school program in Alabama is a manifestation of a basic belief that our people have, that of the right of every man to an opportunity to work if he so desires, and the opportunity to advance in his job within the limits of his capability. We believe that every man should work for his living and that individual effort bears the fruit of pride in accomplishment. We recognize the obligation <clears throat> of our society to help those less fortunate than ourselves. 
but only to the extent of giving those less fortunate people an opportunity to forge their own place in society. Your very presence in these halls today has demonstrated that Alabama's new generation shares this same basic belief. You yourselves have a place of respect among your fellow men. I urge you to always hold fast to your convictions about the worth of honest labor and to reject those doctrines which preach the goodness of charity to those who have no desire to help themselves. Students from throughout our state are anxious to come here to this school and avail themselves of this opportunity in an exciting field of employment. The aviation program and others at this school show that this institution has an eye trained to the future toward providing a flexible labor market, not only for our existing industries and businesses, but also for the wave of industrial growth and expansion which we are sure to enjoy in the next few years. Now stay and be good citizens and give back to this state and your community something of the investment which has been made in you. And as you do it, you will find a satisfaction and a source of pride and accomplishment unequaled anywhere else in the world. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Well, of course, the only regulation we have in Alabama uh, reference to sale of firearms is dealing with pistols and pistols alone. Uh, when, a, when an individual goes into a licensed dealer to buy a pistol, there's a required 48-hour waiting period before the pistol could be delivered to the buyer in order to give the dealer time to check on this person's criminal record uh, uh, anything concerning the individual that uh, should be helpful to the dealer. Uh, I do believe that we need uh, firearm control laws. Uh, I believe it should be handled locally by your states. Let the states handle it and pass these laws. Uh, the statistics have shown that 60% of your murders in the United States uh, are committed with firearms. And, of course, the uh, rate is alarming on murders. We have one murder every 48 minutes. And with the easy uh, accessibility of obtaining firearms, uh, this figure continues to increase. Uh, I think we should have uh, firearm control laws locally. I think the police should have some say-so, an application made uh, for a firearm and a uh, Please check the person out before a firearm is sold to this individual. Well, I hope it doesn't happen. I don't think it'll be good for anyone concerned, and I'm sure that, uh, that, that we don't want that to happen if it can be avoided. Uh, I would like to think that some of the things that we're seeking are not that out of line, and I'm hoping that we can get together with the, with the owners before we do start the season so that morale won't be affected and that we can have another fine season for these people around the country. What are some of the things the players are seeking? Well, uh, an upping of the minimum salary for one, uh, more monies to be put into the pension fund uh, two, uh, more pay preseason games three, and some other minor points, but these are the major points. Uh, I think it goes in cycles. Uh, some clubs maybe blitz a little more than others. Uh, maybe one season you may catch a little more than, than another time. I think it also depends on uh, the, the structure at, at the time of the game, you know, what, what position that team is and whether they're having to go all out and maybe throw caution to the wind in hopes to get back in the race uh, or, or whether they are ahead and they don't want to uh, gamble uh, so frequently. I think all of these things have to be taken into consideration. And actually, we saw a little bit of blitzing last year again, yeah. <laughs> What about this proposal to do away with a kick for an extra point and go to a pass or a run? Are you for that or against it? No, I'm, I'm for staying with that extra point. I, I think if those people realized how tough it is to get those final two yards, they would, they'd sympathize with us and, and let us kick it. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how it works out in the preseason. 
Our flag has been burned, spat upon, and cursed by so-called American citizens without fear of punishment for their treasonable acts. Criminals have been released from prison by new interpretations of the law to choose new victims upon the pretext that their constitutional rights were violated. The greatest hope for our city, or any other city, will lie in the election of stout-hearted men supported by a strong citizenry which knows with respect for the law and obedience to the law does mean to the community. Stronger cities build a stronger nation. Well, I'd have to collectively uh, uh, call playing for the championship teams that we've been on. Uh, that has to be a tremendous thrill. Sometimes you're fortunate if you uh, have a career in the National or American Football Leagues and play on one championship team. We've been privileged to play on five. And so that has to be a great thrill. But if I had to, uh, I guess, siphon it down to one moment, it would be uh, scoring against uh, the Cowboys this last year because in so doing, we realized a three-year dream, Carl.